Okay, so lead code time for today. Uh, leftmost column with at least a one. So in this video, we are going to do two things. One is to tell you um, what is the solution for this specific problem. Um, and the other one is to see how to behave during an interview given a specific question. So let's get started. So uh, a row sorted binary matrix means that all the elements are 0 or 1 and each row of the matrix is sorted in non descending order. Okay, so we have a matrix and it only contains 0 or 1s and for each row it is in non descending order. Okay, so given a row sorted binary matrix, return the index of the leftmost column with 1 in it. If such an index doesn't exist, then we are going to return minus 1. You cannot access the binary uh, matrix directly. You may only access the matrix using binary matrix interface. So it defines a two, two interface. One is the get returns the, the, the dem okay, so returns the element of the matrix at index, row, and column. Another one, dot dimension API returns the dimensions of the matrix as a list of two elements, which contains the number of rows and number of columns. Okay, so submission makes uh, more than one thousand calls to binary matrix dot get. You get just wrong answer. Okay, and also any solution that the time to circum circumvent the judge will result in the qualification. So for custom testing purpose, the input will be the entire matrix math. You may not have access to the binary matrix directly. Okay, so we are only going to call the exposed interface, not going to access the matrix directly. Okay, and uh, let's see. So for example, for the first example, it is going to return. Okay, so it is going to return zero. Okay, so because of this one. For second one, it's going to return 1. For third one, return minus 1 because there's no 1 in the matrix. Okay, so let's see the constraints. Mm, so it's guaranteed that the matrix is not empty. And uh, it's guaranteed that the matrix only contains 0 or 1. And it's guaranteed that each row is in non descending order. Okay. So the first step is to understand problem. So understand the problem and also try to clarify what with what whatever is unclear in your mind and also think about the edge cases. So actually uh, uh, after we read the problem and uh, seeing the examples, um, we are pretty clear about what the question is asking us to do. And also for the edge case, the constraints um, just give us um, some limitation, like there won't be any empty uh, matrix, something like that. Uh, I would say this step, we are good. And the next step is about finding the solution. So for the finding solution part, uh, first of all, um, we can start with something brute force. Uh, so in my mind, I would say the first brute force solution is to iterate through every row, uh, try to see, uh, so for after we iterate through each row, we find the leftmost one, the leftmost column with one for each row. And then uh, after we iterate through each row, uh, we have an idea about uh, which, whichever row that has the leftmost column with ones. So in this case, it is going to be n times m times n. So m is the is a is a is is a number of rows and n is a number of columns. Um, so this is definitely not good. So let me let me see. So not let's say define sharp rows as m and sharp columns as n. So the first brute force solution, it is going to get us O 
am attempting this kind of runtime. So definitely not good. And I think one minor um, optimization on top of this brute force solution is because it is saying that each row is in non descending order, we can do certainly do some binary search for each row. Then it can certainly, so it is binary search for each row. Then it is going to bring down the runtime to be um, O. Uh, m log n so that's because the binary search is going to be a uh, log n and we have m, ro m rows um, I think this one might still not be good that is because usually for this kind of matrix the sorted matrix you can start from some corner um, like a certain corner of this matrix depending on how it is sorted and then move from uh, the this corner to the to the next to the to the to the corner uh, to the 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 corner that's at the diagonal direction so for example if we start from the top right corner we only move left or we only move to the to the bottom by one each time so let's see this case so for this one I would say since it is um, since it is sorted in a semi order for each row I would say if you start from the 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 if you start from the bot the bottom down corner and then you move to the left or to the up by one each time that's good or you can start from the the right up corner and and then you move towards uh the left or towards or, or to the bottom each each step by one that will be good so let's start from the up uh, left corner so we are going to start from the left uh, upper uh, upper left corner uh, sorry upper right corner upper right corner and then move uh, bottom or to the to the left uh, by one step each time so if we because yeah so due to the nature that each row is sorted in non decreasing order suppose um, the for the car let's say we are at uh, matrix I and J so suppose mat I J minus 1 is I'm, uh, if okay so suppose I my J is equal to 1 so if mat IJ is equal to 1 then we can just uh, move we can keep moving the J to the left so we can move to the left by 1 we can keep moving that so otherwise if it is equal to 0 what we could do is we could go further go further down so we are going to do i plus one okay so that would be pretty much it um based on what i can see and then for this solution the runtime is uh going to be o m plus n okay so I would say this is the best approach uh, regarding the runtime, um, I think. And uh, after we uh, talk about the solution with the interviewer, we get the agreement and we do all the runtime analysis, it is a time for us to do some coding work. So for coding work, we care about the speed and uh, the correctness and also the readability. 
So let's get started. So uh, we are going to get the length and width of this matrix. So let's say um, int num rows is equal to binary uh, matrix dot, uh, what is that? It is get, it is dimensions dimensions dot get uh, zero. So this is the number of rows and similar we are going to get the number of columns and, and then we start from uh, the upper uh, the upper right corner so let's say we start from uh, int call is um, num cause minus one int row is equal to uh, zero which is upper right corner and now uh, we are going to find whichever is the leftmost column that has a one so let's say int leftmost column is equal to num cause minus one so um it would be like this so well column is larger equal to zero and row is larger or it row is uh actually weird moving towards the other side row is smaller than num rows then what we are going to do so you will see if ma okay so binary binary matrix dot uh what's that get row and column if it is equal to one that means we could move to the left by one which means we could minus minus column otherwise Okay, so otherwise we will move the row to the to to the bottom, which means we are going to plus plus the row. Okay. Um so okay. And at the end we are going to return. So we will see if left so if left most column is equal to uh, num call uh, num cause minus one then it means the whole matrix is zero so we are going to return minus one otherwise we will return um, left uh, most column plus ones and I think I missed a something here so I think I missed a um, okay so it is not okay row and the column okay so if we, we, we I actually we don't need to define this leftmost column because actually column is what we are trying to get here okay so let's see um so let's get get an example let's say we have zero zero and one one um let's say we first start from uh, uh so first of all row is equal to zero and the call is equal to uh one okay and we see that uh, matrix um, 0, 1, 0, and 1, matrix 0, 0, 1 is equal to 0. Okay, so this mat, let's say first of all we see mat 
uh, 0 and uh, 1 which is equal to 0 so we are going to plus plus the row so we will uh, Okay, so let's see this ta this start this ta this is this part is about testing, and then we move the row to the to the bottom by one. So we plus plus row, um, and then uh, we see okay that uh, mat one one is equal to one, which means we could minus minus column. So column now is equal to zero. And next time we we will see if mat one zero so one zero is equal to one then we put column to be minus one okay and the finally we see that column is not equal to one and we are going to return zero finally okay so I think we uh, so oh by the way this step is about testing so after you are done with the code. Um, you will need to explain this piece of code, doing some sanity check by using an example to your interviewer. And then you will set up some other test cases to make sure that works properly and so on and so forth. Uh, I think for example three, it is similar. Um, it, it is similar. We just go through similar steps. So every time we are going to move the row uh, we are going to plus plus the row and finally the column is is not going to change anymore then we finally return minus one okay so I think it should work uh, let's give it a shot okay it's accepted assembly this piece okay so it's good all right so um, so okay so I would say okay there are some solutions here uh, at the same time just to make sure uh, so okay start from the top right only move left or down okay I will say the last one usually is the good best one okay so the runtime is O N plus M yes I, I, I think we can confirm this is the best solution at this time so regarding the task case setup since it says it has a constraint that the matrix is not gonna be um, empty. We don't need to care about that kind of task cases. Uh, it is better that we set up some task case that can cover different branches. So for example, if all the elements are zero in the matrix um, and also uh, some general, uh, general task cases like example one uh, or, or example four. Um, but make sure that example three exists uh, because it is going to return minus one. Uh, otherwise, I would say regarding the task case setup, if we have come up, came up with those task cases, I would say that's good enough regarding the test coverage. Okay, so that's it about this video. Um, I hope you uh, find this a bit helpful during the time you prepare your interview. So thanks for watching it and uh, I'll see you next time.